In this episode, I will take an excellent tutorial of a vector tennis ball provided to me by Christian of ChrisDesign.wordpress.com and recreate that in Inkscape version 0.46. For those of you not in the know, Christian is an excellent Inkscape artist whose work I really enjoy. You can get to his website and tutorials by first navigating to the Screencasters website, scrolling downward until you find the Other Links section, and then finding Chris Design Blog. Clicking that will take you to Chris's uh, website, and there you can find other Inkscape tutorials. So uh, thank you, Christian, uh, for giving me a topic for a screencast. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to change my document properties. And I'm going to make this 300 wide by 200 high. This will be kind of small, but um, we're working with vectors here, so uh, scale doesn't really matter. Okay, and I'm going to draw a circle. A perfect circle. I do that by holding the control key down and dragging. And then I'm going to change this circle to 120 pixels. I do that uh, by clicking my uh, aspect ratio lock, clicking my units, and then changing that to 120. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, center that up on my page. And we'll just roll this up for now. Again, uh, I'm not using the key status uh, monitor. Uh, it's still not working with uh, Ubuntu Intrepid. So uh, hopefully soon I'll get that back. So until then, I'll just describe uh, what I'm clicking at the keyboard. <clears throat> OK, I have a circle. So the next thing that I want to do is drag down a guide. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and left click uh, from my ruler and just pull down a guide. And I'm going to double click on this guide and make this guide 100 high. Hit OK there. And that'll put it directly on my page, uh, directly in the center of my page, and directly in the center of my circle. <clears throat> um, the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, grab my circle tool and draw an ellipse. I'm going to give this a black stroke and I'm going to remove the fill. And I'm going to make sure that I have uh, four uh, for the stroke width. And I'm going to make this 145 wide by 85 high. Okay. And you want to make sure that. Uh, when you're uh, changing the size of certain objects and you don't want your stroke to change that you need to uh, click on your option here and uh, uncheck scale stroke width okay that way you can change this any size you want and the stroke will stay the same size okay so I'll just undo that okay now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll go ahead and uh, center that uh, vertically on my page so it's center and I'm gonna want this about a third of the way up so I think what I'm gonna do is just draw I'll just draw a construction box and I'll make it about 50 pixels high and I'll put that in the center And I'll just kind of push that down. Okay. That's about where I want that. Okay. Now I need another one um, directly right below it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by uh, changing my center point location. Uh, I'm going to hold my control key down, left click, and grab this center point. And I'm going to snap it down on my guide. Okay. Now, uh, one handy tip about these uh, center points is sometimes you want to get them back to the original spot. Uh, you do that um, 
by holding the shift key down and then left clicking that uh, those crosshairs and it'll snap back to the origin uh, the original point okay so you can just keep that in mind okay now that I've uh, moved my center point I'm gonna right click on this and duplicate so now that I have a, an extra copy here and I'm gonna click this twice and I'm gonna grab my rotation handles I'm gonna hold my control key down and I'm just gonna drag this down 180 degrees okay now I've got two of them directly centered uh, on the ball here okay so let me zoom out just a little bit <clears throat> okay now what I'm gonna do is select this item select this item I'm gonna go to path and go stroke to path okay I'm gonna select this circle this first object here and I'm going to do a difference I'll do that again for the second one. We'll go to path difference and I'll cut that away. Okay, I no longer need this guide, so I'm going to hold my control key down and left click it to delete it. Okay, and then let's zoom back up on this thing. All right, now if I double click this, you notice that I have uh, this object is now a path and I have uh, a certain amount of nodes around here. What I want to do is add more nodes. So, what I'm going to do is leaving that highlighted, I'm going to go to my effects pull down, modify path, and the add nodes option. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have 3.0 in here. Uh, what that's going to do is add a node every three pixels on this whole entire object. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to hit close. Now when I double click it, you'll see that I've got all these nodes here. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Okay, now having that many nodes, next thing I'm going to do is select this again, go to the effects pull down, modify path, jitter nodes okay for jitter nodes what I'm gonna do is make this 2.0 I'm gonna make sure that the shift nodes option is unchecked and the shift node handles and use normal distribution are both checked I hit apply there and what that's going to do is it's gonna dirty up this image a little bit it's gonna make it rough everywhere okay and that's the effect that I'm looking for okay so let me zoom back out on that okay now the next thing that I need to do is uh, we're gonna give this a gradient <clears throat> but before I do that I'm gonna bring in a palette that I've already made in advance what I'll do is I'll link this palette with this particular episode so you can download the SVG for it. Okay, that way we don't have to type in numbers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in my palette. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my gradient tool. I'm going to do a radial gradient and I'm going to double click this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the default behavior is that a radial gradient is dark in the middle, in the center, and uh, gets transparent as you move outward. Okay. If you want to reverse that, what you do is you hold your shift key down and press R uh, on your keyboard, and it'll go the opposite direction. Now you have transparent on the inside and dark on the outside. Okay. So sometimes that uh, helps if you just you know want to do a quick reverse that way you don't have to go back into your uh, edit menu okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some more stops okay I'll add one right here right here and maybe one right there okay and it really doesn't matter where you put them you know you can slide these out a little bit more if you want and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to select my color picker. I'm going to select this inside 
and I'm going to make it this color here. I'll select the color picker again, select this node here, touch my second color, select this node or stop, select my third color, select this node, my fourth color, and finally select the last node and pick my dark color. Okay, and that gives me a nice uh, gradient here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is get this off center just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. This is all kind of uh, according to taste, really. Okay, and I just want to give it just kind of a dark area right here. Make sure that that lighting is just coming from, from this bit, okay? All right, next. <clears throat> next, we're going to make a uh, spiral. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this palette. I don't need it anymore. And again, I'll link to this palette uh, so you guys can uh, download that for yourself. That way we don't have to go and, and type in all these uh, uh, colors. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. And we are going to use our spiral tool. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have these values set for 18.75. Uh, I'm going to have this one set for 0 0.850. And this one set for 0. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and drag that out. doesn't matter how big I make it. And I'm going to change the stroke size from 1 to 0.1. Okay, so I have a very fine uh, stroke. Okay, and I'm going to make this the same size as my circle, 120 pixels, excuse me, and 120 pixels here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and just slide that to the, to the side for now. And I'm going to come on this side and I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm going to make this one 120 pixels. Actually, I'm going to make this, let's make this a little smaller. Let's go 118 and a half. And I'll show you where I'm going with this, okay? Let's give this a uh, kind of a medium gray. Let's go to our gradient tool. We'll make sure that we have the uh, radial ellipse. I'm sorry, uh, radial gradient selected, and we'll double click this. And again, I'm going to use a Shift R to reverse it. And I'm going to put a new stop right in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to select the inside stop and we'll change that to white. The second stop, we'll change this white. Okay, and then by the way, again, I'm using the Ubuntu uh, color palette down here. Okay, it's almost uh, just like the uh, Tango color palette, but there's a few more uh, colors on there. Okay. I think that looks pretty good and basically what I'm going to do is push this all the way to the back. Actually I'm just going to select this and center that up on my page. Okay. Okay and what that's going to do is simulate some darkening of these uh, seams that are on this tennis ball. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take this object here and I'm going to center that up on my page, which happens to be directly on top of the ball. Okay. And we'll leave that there for now. Um, 
Next thing I'm going to draw is just a, we'll just draw a small rectangle. We'll push this all the way to the back. So a little bit bigger. Really doesn't matter how big you make this rectangle, okay? So I'm going to take this and uh, let's give this some radius corners. And I'm going to center that up on my page. And we'll get that out of the way for now. And I'm going to give this a gradient, okay? I do that by selecting my gradient tool, selecting my linear gradient, double clicking. We'll move this to the top. I'll hold my control key down and get that to the bottom. Okay, and we'll give that a shade. And I'm going to go to my edit. And we'll darken up the bottom. About like that. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse this so we have light on top, dark on the bottom. Okay. We'll go just a little darker. And here we'll go just a little lighter. Okay. That'll give us a nice. Uh, a nice gradient. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to pick on this spiral and I'm going to convert that to a path. So I go to path, object to path, we'll go to effects, I'll go to add nodes, and I'm going to do a, uh, we'll leave this about a 3.0. Let's just try that and see what it looks like for now. If we don't like it, we can always undo it. So I'll hit apply. What that's going to do, if I double click this now, now we have lots of nodes on this. Okay. So we're going to go to our effects pull down, modify path, and we're going to do jitter nodes again. This time I'm going to put 20.0. I'll make sure that I have the shift nodes unchecked and our bottom two options checked and I'll hit apply. Okay and what that's going to do is that's going to uh, jitter the spiral that we have and what I'm attempting to do is make fibers here. Okay so I'm going to select uh, the spiral or the jittered uh, spiral that we've just made and I'm going to make that uh, stroke color yellow instead of black okay so I'm going to pick this Ubuntu yellow and just drag and drop that right on top of this black stroke okay and that'll take a minute um, adding a lot of uh, uh, nodes like that will slow down Inkscape a little bit uh, what you can do uh, to speed things up if if things do get a little slow is um, I think you can hold your, uh, I think it's your shift key and your number pad 5. Uh, maybe it's the control 5. Yeah, it's the control key, number pad 5, and you'll go into outline mode. In outline mode, things will move very, very fast because you're not, you don't have anything rendered. Okay? So if you do need to kind of move around quickly, you can toggle that on and off. Okay? So we'll do control, number pad 5 to get that to re-render. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to draw a an ellipse. Make sure the stroke is turned off. I'll make this all black and I'll give this about a 75% opacity. And we'll make this a little bigger give this a drop shadow ok 
Okay, and I'm going to take that and center that on the page. And holding my control key down, I'm going to move that upward. And we'll go to our fill and stroke dialog. And I'm going to give this about a 16%, whoops, not 126, 16% for the blur. And I'm going to move that down a couple steps. Okay, that'll give us a, uh, a little bit of a drop shadow there. All right, I think we're getting close. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to add some text here. So um, let's type something out. And again, Christian gave me this idea here. So we'll do Inkscape Sports. And we'll move this up a little bit. And we'll go to our text tool. And I'm going to slide this all the way down. And we're going to use a font that Christian provided for me called Viper Nora. Okay? I'll provide this font uh, as, a, uh, as a download for this episode so you guys can grab it. And I'm going to change the spacing to about 120. And I'm going to center this. Okay, we hit apply. Actually, I need to make this, let's make this 14 pixels high. Okay, I think that'll work. Now I'll go ahead and move this out so we can see it. And what I'm going to do is double click in here. And I'm going to select just the bottom line, and I'm going to change that to 10 pixels. Matter of fact, let's try 11. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and what I'm going to do is bring in the Inkscape logo. Okay, now you can find the Inkscape logo in your uh, install directory. I've prepared this one already. And what I'm going to do is select my text and change the color so it's just a little bit lighter. Okay, and I'm going to take both of these. We'll do last selected. I'll center that up. And I'm going to pull this up and try to center it. Okay. I think that looks pretty good and I'm going to take that and group that together. Now I'm going to take this, change this to page, center that on my page, which centers it on the ball. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do is take this spiral, bring it out front, and I need to change the transparency. We'll go with a 40 here. What's well, not so bright? Okay, and I think we're getting close. So, what I'm going to do is drag in. Nice little link. I'll go ahead and center that up. Make that white. That way you guys will know where this tutorial came from. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. Now let's try this one here. Okay, and that is our tennis ball. Okay, now what we tried to simulate on the tennis ball was we tried to make it a little bit rough around the edges. We did that by using jitter nodes. And we needed to simulate the fibers uh, of the tennis ball. And we did that by making a spiral 
and uh, adding more nodes to it and jittering the nodes. That means, in other words, kind of uh, just randomizing the nodes around there. Okay? So hopefully, I, I think that looks like a tennis ball. I was, uh, was kind of impressed with it when uh, Chris sent it to me. Um, I would imagine that Chris is going to do more uh, sport-like tutorials. Um, so please uh, check on his website uh, often uh, for the next week or two. Uh, hopefully he'll have some more tutorials. Uh, this is our tennis ball. And again, I thank uh, Christian from uh, chrisdesign.wordpress.com for uh, giving me a great idea to make a screencast. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope that uh, Richard and I can work with Christian sometime in the future. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Heathen X.